In this video, I will show a way to generate regression tests for KiCad's PCB new. When submitting a regression test, we don't really want to submit our source utilities. KiCad developer is not really interested in those. What they really want to see is the actual PCB new commands being executed. In an effort to make this easier, I've come up with a way to extract each of the PCB new API invocations. Here I have a cell loaded. Open the scripting console and I import my code. What this does is it wraps each of the PCB new commands and methods such that the call can be registered. Once I've invoked the package, the called commands will automatically be registered into the file test.py in whatever directory you invoked PCB new in. Once I do that, I can then call one of my macros. In this case, I'll run the generate minimum spanning tree route. When this window over here pops up, we immediately see that some things have been added to this file. In this case, it's basically the code that collects uh, the list of nets and modules that are available. In my case, I'll select power and ground and connect it to all modules, tell it to go, and now a bunch more stuff is being written. Now note here that it actually isn't finished. Exiting the command will then flush the file buffer. So let's see what's being recorded. So in this case, the first line that's being called is in the pop-up of the basic layer picker. This is one of my helper utilities for creating the, the GUI pickers. So the first thing that's actually called from PCB new is this uh, function here, where it takes this call here and returns a value. Now my code does not capture the names of these variables. It simply says, well, the type is board. And this is the first value that I've seen. So I just put a suffix of underscore zero, right? So again, dialog utilities, line 64 is right here. Then the next thing that happens is line 268, here we are taking the board that we had from before, accessing the names of the layers. So in the case of this package, whenever a constant value, either a string or some sort of a number is returned, I generate an assert for that value. And all of this is just GUI type code so far, we're not actually running any of the minimum spanning tree type stuff. Continuing along, we now are looking at the nets. So here we see that first we're accessing the board again, and then getting the nets by name map. Sign that to this value here. It's an inter intermediate value here for this guy. Then what we see is we have here iteration over this thing here. And so that introduces some code that isn't in this file here, but rather uh, is automatically generated uh, for you based on the PCB new.py for iteration type stuff. So it has your module list, it does a get, uh, increments to the next one. Each of these guys here are then incremented since each value uh, does change. Then finally we cast to be the one that we want and get reference. So that would be on line 309. Continuing further along, here I'm gathering all of the existing vias. So I do board get tracks, you see that here. I iterate through them. So again, we see some iteration stuff here. In this case, I don't have any routing in the design already, so it empties early. And finally here, I'm actually creating new tracks. This here is on line 125. Here we see a track is created, board three, add track, track zero, set net, create a point, set the start, create another point, set the end. Width, layer, and so on. Note that for things like set layer, we don't actually want to use the constants. At this point in the tracking, the constant for the layer has already been converted to an actual number where the layer has been set here, but this at least is a starting point for creating some sort of a regression. Now that we have this captured code, let's try to actually run it. Open the same uh, board again, open our scripting console and do exec file and go. And so now note at this point that nothing has changed on the screen because we're not running inside of a plugin. What we need to do then is do PCB new refresh. And now we have our minimum spanning tree route as we did the first time uh, around. So how does it work? We'll start at the top level and work our way down. So for module PCB new, for each of the attributes in the module, if that attribute is a class, I will wrap the class. I'll show that in a second. If it's a method or function, which in this case, it'll just be functions, it will go ahead and track the function. Here in track class, for each name in the objects dictionary, there are a couple of methods that we don't really want to wrap. Uh, in particular, string and representation, uh, those will be called a lot recursively from within the system uh, when gathering information for printing out. And that, and that makes the debugging of this package here tricky. And for each of the methods on the class, I will call this function here track method, which returns a new function that we replace the original function with. So track method is kind of where the magic is. Track method creates a new function 
which takes the original arguments to the function that we're wrapping, right? We want to be able to call this replacement function in exactly the same way as the original. Here, I track to see whether or not I am uh, re-entering into this function. I only want to track the top level. If a PCB new method calls another PCB new method, I only want to track the first one. So that's what this here is to keep track of. This is debug stuff. Here I call the actual method, m here is the original method that was passed in, and I'm giving it the same arguments that are given to the replacement function, and I then save the result. So if I'm actually tracking this particular method call, if I'm not being called from another, then I will then go and save some information about uh, what's, what's happening. These lines here is where I'm actually writing the lines to test.py. There's a couple different ways that methods can be called, and syntactic sugar will make those calls be different. So when calling the constructor, we're not actually directly calling init, but rather we're calling the constructor function, which is then converted into an init. So this is where initialization happens. If the function does not return a value other than none, then there's no asserting to be done. If the return value is a constant, then I will do an assert, and otherwise I will create a new variable. So the, so the variable name is generated by this format return value, and the formatting of this argument string is done by this format arx function. Something similar happens to functions, uh, except there's no constructors. There are some other uh, variations there. It's much simpler. Here is where I'm formatting the return value. I check to see if I'm a number, string, unicode, such things, or I will create a, a new variable name. This code can be found on my GitHub, uh, kicad underscore mmccoo. I'll have a link in the description below. I hope you find this useful. If so, leave a comment below.